Hello guys, let's talk about a new topic today, which is very, very interesting. And the name of the topic is apoptosis. Let me just go into the background of this topic. This topic means programmed cell death. It means every cell that is born will die eventually. Whenever a multicellular organism, its body structure or the organs are formed, it requires a lot of cells to get died in the process. That is going to be the programmed one. That is the one way. Another way is that, you know, when a cells are under kind, some kind of stress, which could be the internal, maybe the oxidative damages, maybe the DNA damage, maybe viral infection, maybe other kind of infection. So cells are induced to undergo the apoptosis or programmed cell death. There will be two ways it is going to happen. One is uh, extrinsic pathway, another one is the intrinsic. When we hear this term apoptosis, it serves the two purposes. One, it could be a very creative process where the certain or organs are going to be formed. On the other hand, when the cells are under some kind of distress, they may commit suicide. This process is well known and well defined. And there are certain players into it We'll talk about one by one. The first player in this is going to be the caspages, which are uh, very important enzymes, which may normally remain in the inactive form because of pro caspases. Caspages, you know, uh, this is a protein which has cysteine and the spartate in their active site, which is a very, very important enzyme. Let's talk about little more. Let me just first introduce this. The, what exactly the apoptosis is all about. Let's talk about it. So basically cell death, it could happen because of the injuries or mechanical damage or exposure to the toxic chemical, which comes under the necrosis, whereas the cell can die or by committing the suicide, it will get the signals both internal as well as the external signal. Now, the question comes in front of us, why at all the cell will commit suicide? There'll be a few things that I told you in the beginning. Apoptosis is a must during the developmental process, whether it's a reabsorption of the tail pole, tail, or maybe the formation of the fingers, like you know the space between our finger, or the formation of the certain holes, maybe the inner lining that is called the endometrium of the uterus, or maybe certain connection between the neuron. There'll be numerous such kind of thing which requires the apoptosis, the one thing. Second thing is that the whenever the cells are under stress or cell become distressed because of the certain regions, maybe the viral infection, maybe some cells in the immune system which are under training, maybe the cells under cell has undergone under the oxidative stress or the DNA damage, maybe a cell turns cancerous. So in all cases, it requires to undergo the suicide. Now, what makes cells to suicide? There'll be few things which is required. One is the withdrawal of the positive signals or giving or the induction of the negative signal. For example, withdrawal of the positive signal, maybe the growth factor for the neurons or maybe internuclein tube. Whereas in the negative uh, signal, we have the increased level of the oxidant or the oxidative damage, maybe some chemical which is destroying the DNA, maybe other activator which is coming from the outside, for example, the tumor necrosis factor alpha, maybe the lymphotoxin TNFB, or maybe fast ligand, there'll be many more. And it was discovered properly in the case of C ligands. You can see the relationship that the three different kinds of molecules are shown. One is a regulator. It will decide when the cells should undergo the apoptosis. Second is the adopter, which is inducing the effector molecule. The finally one which, is, which leads to the killing is the effector molecule. Look at like uh, in the case of uh, C ligands, C9, which is a regulator, or maybe anti-apoptotic protein, you can say, which is a uh, not allowing the CD4 to get activated or regulating it 
and once the CD4 get activated, it is going to activate the CD3 and which leads to the death. Whereas in the case of faulty beds, we'll discuss this in detail, little detail as well. The BCL2 family protein, which is activating the PAF1, which can activate the Cas, Cas9 and Cas3, which eventually lead to the death of a cell. Let's talk about these two pathways, which finally leads to the programmed cell death. In brief, extrinsic pathway where the factors are going to be external. For example, the dead ligand, they will bind to the jet receptors on the cell surface, which activate the protein initiator cas caspase 8, and finally, which lead to the caspase 3, which leads to the programmed cell death. Where is the intrinsic pathway, which usually operates in the mitochondria, which leads to the process, maybe the DNA damage or the activation of the P53 proteins, which can make the mitochondria to make the cytochrome C, which is a soluble protein to be released when it is, you know, it is a part of the electron transport chain. But once it comes into the matrix in the soluble form, it has a different function to do. It will activate the initiator Cas9 or Caspase9. And finally, effector molecule Caspase3 will, will get activated and which leads to the PCD, programmed cell death. Caspase activation, what does it mean? Especially if you see any caspase, in the beginning, it is going to be inactive, which requires certain region to be removed. For example, uh, if you look at this alpha and beta domain of the inactive caspase 8, it has a dead domain, which needs to undergo the proteolytic cleavage. Once it removes, then you know alpha and beta is going to be get dimerized and the caspase is going to be activated. Fine. So two processes it requires. One is the cleavage. Another one is the dimerization. There is a list of uh, caspases in the human zone at the bottom. Caspase, which is involved in the inflammation, is a caspase 1. We call it ICE 4 and 5. Whereas the caspase involved in the apoptosis, initiator caspases is going to be 2, 8, 9, 10. And executioner or the effector caspases is going to be 3, 6, and 7. Let's say how the intrinsic pathway operates. So whenever some kind of damage occurs into the mitochondria, so as I told you, the cytochrome C, it just, which is the part of the uh, electron transport chain and present on the inner membrane of the mitochondria, will cut off and will go into the uh, matrix. And you know, uh, even like, you know, it is released in the, if you just see in this diagram shown, which is in the, the space between the outer and inner membrane as well, where it gets, you know, to make, uh, it will bind with the a protein we call as a APAF1. And this APAF1 is going to be activated. Uh, it requires, you know, ATP to be hydrolyzed. And this protein is going to be formed. And if you see the blue color structure over here, which is the car domain, and it is going to be assembled to make a cyclic structure. And then the protein, we call it a pro, pro caspase 9, will come over. You can see over here. And they will, you know, bind to this specific region. And this, you know, the cyclic structure will activate the caspase 9. And then caspase cascade is going to start and cell will undergo the apoptosis. This is the intrinsic pathway. Now, these are the very important families of the BCL2 family which is going to you know, play a very important role in regulating, in activating or in affecting the apoptosis process. If you look at the first family of the protein, there'll be three classes. First class, if you look at, they have the BS4, BS3, BH1, and BS2 domain into the structure. And the protein, which is a part of this is the BCL2, BCL XL. And BH4 is the one region, it is the anti-apoptotic protein, means it will not allow the apoptosis to take place. Whereas the other two, they're the pro-apoptotic. Whenever they are there, they're going to facilitate apoptosis to take place, which has the example. If you look at the pro-apoptotic BH123, which is lacking the BH4, and the third one, which is having just the BH3 domain, and they have their own protein, like for example, backs and back of the BH123 family and the BS3 family has the bad beam, bit, tumor, and oxa. They are very, very important one. Now the BC, 
BCL2 family. I just now told you the first set will inhibit the apoptosis, second set will promote the apoptosis, and third set, which is the BS3 only protein, binds and regulates the anti apoptotic BCL2 protein to promote the apoptosis. How? Look at this the pathway. Once you see that here is the BCL2 protein, which is active, will not allow the BH123 protein to get come together. Hence, it will prevent the apoptosis. Whereas, apoptotic stimulus, if it comes, it is going to regulate the BCL2 or anti apoptotic protein, which eventually lead to the uh, proper formation of the BH123 family and which eventually lead to the activation of the apoptotic process in the cell. And there'll be other level of the control which is working when certain survival factor which comes and bind to this acceptor, which takes place, you know, and the transduction occur into the cell, which actually make a lot of BCL2 protein, which is going to block the apoptosis. On the other hand, if the inactivation of the pro-apoptotic BS3, only BCL2 protein happens, here the, the survival factor works in the different way. It will activate AKT kinase, which is going to inactivate the, you know, those BCL2 protein. And because of that, the BCL2 protein is going to be activated, which were earlier inactivated one by binding with the bad protein. They get activated and apoptosis is going to be blocked. Third way is that the inactivation of the anti-IAPs, which is again going to get activated, MAP kinase, and this MAP kinase is going to activate the heat protein. Heat protein will, you know, uh, have a control over the IAPs, which is, you know, the apoptosis induction protein, which is going to be regulated and the apoptosis is going to be blocked. So this is all about the apoptosis that you have seen. And uh, the, I told you the extrinsic process, they require the, some external factor, for example, the fast ligand or TNF alpha and beta, which will lead a cell to be dead. This process is, you know, working at the, many places during the development, during the growth process, even during the immune uh, reactions which are happening in the body. So that's all for this lecture. Hopefully you enjoy it and it has served this purpose and you like this lecture, please do subscribe, watch, share and press the bell button to get the notification. Thank you. Thank you so much.